Hey, 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 hey. Welcome to my channel. I am so glad that you're here to watch this video. This is part one of a series where I'm breaking down sections of the one and only interview done by the adoptive parents of Orin and Orson West, also known as Sincere and Classic. The adoptive parents, Trizel and Jacqueline West, did this one and only interview on December 23rd, 2020. To date, it is the only interview that they have done since they reported Orin and Orson West missing on December 21st, 2020. Before I show you what I think to be the biggest red flag during this entire 13 minute long interview, I wanna ask you to make sure that you subscribe to my channel Hit the all option when you ring-a-ding my bell so that you don't miss the rest of this series. Also, please hit the thumbs up to let YouTube know to share this video out more. This series will be so very important since we don't have a lot to go on in this mysterious case of these two missing children. I did my review of this entire interview back in early January. I will link it in the description box below so you can go watch it if you would like. I reviewed the neighbor's security camera footage before I reviewed this interview. I'll link it below also. Okay, so let's do this now. I have watched this interview so many times because it is the only interview still four and a half months after they reported the boys missing that they have done anywhere with anyone. So I believe that we need to look into every answer, each word that these two people said two days after they claimed their youngest two children just vanished like magic from the backyard of their new home on Aspen Avenue in California City. So first, I'm going to show you this clip from my review video that's linked below. They uh, I have older pictures. All my newest were on my phone. Okay. A lot of people are speaking. Okay, so we heard Jackie first. She said a lot of her newer pictures of the boys are on her phone, but the police have her phone, remember? She was being honest, in my opinion, but that head jerk at the end says so much to me. I believe that was when she thought about what pictures are actually on her phone and how old the pictures actually are. Let's watch that head jerk one more time. They, uh, I have older pictures. All my newest were on my phone. Okay. A lot of people are speaking of- You see that head jerk? Mm -hmm. Also, right after she makes this statement, while she's doing this telling head jerk, Trizel's eyes are fluttering like crazy. When someone does a rapid eye blink like this, it's a way for them to try to erase what memory they are seeing. He does this often throughout this entire interview. So let's watch this clip one more time and watch Trizel's eyes this time. They, uh, I have older pictures. All my newest were on my phone. Okay. A lot of people are speaking of this as, you know, after the math past tense. I want to talk okay. about... So were they both thinking about when Oren had all these bruises on his face? Were they thinking about Oren's busted and swollen and bruised top lip that I'm showing you right here? This picture breaks my heart and it pisses me off so bad at the same time. So let's move on. This next clip isn't much better though. This next clip is the biggest red flag to me. Listen closely to each word. The reporter asked for Trizel and Jackie to tell us about the kids in present tense. What kind of boys are they? Which in an actual missing child case, I believe this is where the parents would boast 
about how sweet, caring, smart, funny, kind, loving, you know, all the compliments parents would say about our children, especially when they're missing. But not these parents. <laughs> Listen to this clip. A lot of people are speaking of this as, you know, after the math past tense. I want to talk oh, about gosh. the kids in present tense. What kind of, what kind of boys are these? Tell us about the boys. Very punctual, very rambunctious, and they do love to wrestle. They, they do love to kind of get rough with each other. They're kids. They're kids. Okay, so Trizel starts out saying that the boys are very playful and very rambunctious. He can't even say the boys' names, nor can he say the boys or our boys. Let's listen to that clip again and listen super carefully to his words after that. What kind of boys are these? Tell us about the boys. Very playful, very rambunctious, and they do love to wrestle. They, they do love to kind of get rough with each They're other. They're kids. They're kids. He follows playful and rambunctious with, quote, they do love to wrestle. They do love to kind of get rough with each other. What? He does not say one single compliment about Orin and Orson at all. I'm going to tell you why I believe he told us about how the boys, quote, love to wrestle and quote, love to kind of get rough with each other in just a minute. Watch what Jackie does when she hears him say this shit. What kind of boys are these? Tell us about the boys. Very playful, very rambunctious, and they do love to wrestle. They, they do love to kind of get rough with each They're other. Kids. They're kids. And Jackie jumps right in to say, quote, They're kids. So two things here. No shit, Jackie. We know that they're kids. But the second part is, I feel like Jackie was trying to help rationalize the dumb shit her dumbass husband just said, in my opinion. They never once told us any loving things about Orin and Orson during this entire interview. Now, I still stand on my opinion from day one of why Trezell said these ridiculous words. So let's watch my live unscripted reaction to what Trezell said that I said back in January. Very playful, very rambunctious, and they do love to wrestle. They, they do love to kind of get rough with each They're other. Kids. They're kids. Okay, hold up. Now this, this goes beyond. I think this is the part of the interview that pissed me off more than anything, anything else they said during this interview. Very playful, very rambunctious, and they do love to wrestle. They do, they do love to kind of get rough with each other. Okay, so you know what he just told us right there? He just told us that these children are physically hurt. That they physically hurt these children. That's what he just told us. Mark my words. I guarantee I won't have to eat those words later. And that pisses me off to know it like I can't even explain to you how pissed off this part makes me you had the opportunity to boast about your children about a three and four year old toddler and you chose to say that they are very playful very rambunctious which means they can't control them and they do love to wrestle they do they do love to kind of get rough with each other like, that's the, that's the worst part of this whole thing. So, obviously, Trizel pissed me off just a little bit. I still believe now more than ever that this statement means that Orin and Orson have bruises on them. Just like the picture that I showed of Orin, he has bruises all over his face. If you want to see where I show this picture up close and with all the details, you can watch my video that's titled Detained that I just uploaded not that long before this one. I feel like Trizel is explaining why if the boys are found while they're still, well, before they decompose, why they will have bruises on their little defenseless bodies. This statement from Trizel was and still is my biggest red flag because I still 
believe he was telling us that they abused these babies. In my opinion, this is all my opinion and only my opinion. But I feel very strong about this. What do you think? Why do you believe Trizel chose to spit these words out when he was asked to describe his adorable babies? Why do you think that Jackie jumped in and said, they're kids? What was she thinking? I can't wait to read your comments. Now let's look at the very next part of this interview. Trizel finishes his thoughts about what the world should know about his boys. I'm also going to play what my live unscripted response was back in early January when I originally made this entire reaction review video to this pathetic interview. Let's watch. Roll the clip. Of course, they would love to go out, but we would, we, so during the pandemic, we weren't trying to go, you know, out here. And so we stayed out here. Inside. So that right there was him explaining why none of the neighbors have any footage of any of the kids. He doesn't realize. Look at those eyes. Ooh, that's freaky. It's like he's staring right at me. Ooh, stop it. Okay, he doesn't realize that the neighbor next door had that camera that was aimed on their house enough that he could see the four boys getting in the van on the 19th when they went to grandma's for vacation. There were only four, not six. He thought, see that, that footage hadn't come out yet. He thought that if I say, you know, we weren't trying to go out during the pandemic, that he would get away with saying that. Nice try to cover that up. Okay, and just a reminder, everything that I said in my review review video originally was all my opinion also. Okay, so Trizel explains why all of his neighbors will say that they've never seen any of the kids. Well, maybe one. But at this time when I did this review video, all the neighbors said that they had not seen any of the kids. Now, I believe that Trizel and Jackie West knew the neighbors across the street had security cameras that could see the front of their house. But I don't believe that he knew about the neighbor that was beside their house, who everyone calls Mike. Remember, this interview was done before Mike's footage had been shared and widely known about. Now, let's watch when the bio aunt, Kiki, starts asking questions about Trizel and Jackie searching for Orin and Orson. Roll this clip. Yes. Yes. We searched for them cops. They almost yell at them. Yes. We searched for them cops. That's what I'm saying. What time did they come up missing? They came missing right before it got dark. And then we call, I, I searched that property. I even drove around the, the, this neighborhood. Okay, wait, right before it got dark. Now, they did plan that out pretty well. You know, it, they didn't do it in the morning because then it, they would have hours of daylight for people to search and look around. So they did try to plan it to where it was right when it got dark. So then they would have approximately, what, 14 hours of darkness? because the 21st was the shortest day of the year. Sunset was at 4.44 p.m., like I said in my last video, which also 4.44 is the, the angel number, um, which uh, rips my heart out, I'm telling you. Like, I just, so they did plan that pretty well. 4.44, the sun goes down, and then the sun won't rise until the next morning. So actually, it would be probably longer than that, maybe about 16 hours of darkness. So that was, that was a, a I'll give them credit because they don't have brains, obviously. So that part, they did half-ass use their brain, which it's good that they don't have brains because that's how they're going to get busted. And that's how they're going to end up in prison for murder, in my opinion. Right here. Okay, right. so they make sure to say that they searched before they called the police. We now know that they only searched for about 18 minutes. So they were telling the truth about this part. The major part that sticks out to me is where Trizel says they came up missing right before it got dark. Then he stutters over his words and says, then we cut, 
I, I, I searched the property. I, I even drove around this neighborhood. Like I said, they planned that part out pretty well, in my opinion. Planning this whole shit, in my opinion, on December 21st, the shortest day of the year. Let's hear the rest of this babbling. Roll the rest of the clip. Right here. I even talked to a gentleman on that side, on those streets over there. I said, did you see my, some little black kids? And, that way looking for them? That's the way. and see, that's the only time that he ever uses any type of descriptive word about his child other than talking about how playful they are and how they love to wrestle and get rough with each other. Describing what they look like. That's the only thing that he says through this entire interview that he asked a gentleman over on the road over there if he had seen some little black kids. That's the only description that we have from mom and dad. And I still stand by every word I said here back in January. Trizelle and Jackie never gave us any description of the boys during this entire interview. Trizelle saying, quote, little black kids was the only description that he gave the world who would be looking for Orin and Orson. Let's watch the rest of what he said here. Roll the rest of the clip. I was going to come, but when I came back home, I decided to call the cops because it was dark. They couldn't have got away that fast. If they couldn't have got away that fast, then why in the hell did he hop in his van with a quickness and drive the opposite direction? Contradicting himself. Keep going. Keep going. In my opinion, this whole interview, all 13 minutes of it, was all Trizel and Jackie trying to tell everyone what they wanted us to believe. That's it. They never told us anything about the boys. They walked through each step that they had scripted, in my opinion, before they even stepped out the door on December 19th, 2020. In my opinion, Trizel and Jackie killed these babies over the early summer before they moved to California City. They moved to Cal City, in my opinion, to get away from Bakersfield, where people knew them. This way, being over an hour away from everyone, they'd be less likely to run into anyone who would ask about Orin and Orson. But they needed a plan. They needed to plan a way to tell everyone that the boys were gone. I believe that they planned this story for months. I believe the script started with them getting the other boys out of the house before they involved the police. I believe they made a list of bullet points that they wanted to discuss during this interview. I believe that that's why Trezell went 12 different ways in every answer that he gave to try to say each thing on their script. I believe this whole interview was just Trezell and Jackie trying to convince us to believe them. That's why they showed no emotion for the boys, in my opinion. I believe that they were too focused on convincing us to focus on their fake emotion. So that's all I'm putting in this part, part one. We will look at another section of this interview in the rest of this series until we cover the entire interview. Tell me your thoughts about what I shared here. Did you notice Trizel said that the boys love to wrestle and love to get rough with each other? Is this a huge red flag for you like it was for me? Tell me your thoughts in the comments below. Also, tell me what part of this interview, interview that you would like to see next. What part do you feel needs its own video for all of us to watch and review again? Thank you so much for watching. Make sure that you're all subscribed, ring the bell, and hit the all option, and then smash that thumbs up button, please. Till next time, love you bunches.